Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me tonight. Um, we are doing Constellation Tour number 75. And we're going to cover the Constellation Vela, or the sail, which is part of the great ship Argo Navis in the sky. The ship consists of Carina the keel, Puppus the stern, and Vela the sail. So tonight we're going to go over the sail. It's a, it's a far southern constellation in the south celestial hemisphere. So I've decided to take us all the way down to Buenos Aires, Argentina, for tonight's star tour. Uh, Vela is best seen between February and April. So we're set up here for March the 5th, 2021, at about midnight. So this one's going to be a little bit different, but different is good. It's going to be a little unfamiliar, a little bit out of my comfort zone, but unfamiliar is good, and a challenge is also a good thing. So we have Stellarium set up here for a naked eye field of view of 60 degrees. And it's set up for, let's see, a somewhat light polluted sky. We are looking, let's look down a little bit here. We're looking pretty far up there. We're looking um, toward the Southwest right now from Buenos Aires in March at around midnight. So Vela is probably one of the least observed constellations, even though it is part of the great ship. So how do we go about finding Vela? Well, let's get familiar a little bit tonight with uh, the southern sky. It's always a little bit of a challenge. So we're going to, it's been a while since we've been this far south in our simulation. So let's, let's start there. Let's go ahead and turn our view south. And nothing's really going to look too familiar here. So let's get familiar with it. We're looking toward the south from the southern hemisphere. So this is sort of like looking north from the northern hemisphere. And you would, you would probably start by trying to identify the north star. So let's try to identify the, the South Star. And the South Star is very faint, so it's easier just to try to find the point in the sky around which everything turns when you're in the Southern Hemisphere. So we're looking south, and you're going to start by looking for Crux, or the Southern Cross, which is right here. And then you're going to look for these two bright stars over here. This is Alpha and Beta Centauri. And they are not located at the point of the, um, the South Celestial Pole, but they point to it. So if you follow the long axis of the cross and keep going, and then you draw a line between these two stars, Alpha and Beta Centauri, bisect them with an imaginary line and keep going. And imagine a point in the sky where these two lines, the first one you drew and the second one you drew, where about they intersect. You kind of have to use your imagination. So that's about here. So this would be the location of the South Celestial Pole. And if there was a bright uh, south star like there is um, in the Northern Hemisphere, it would be located here. Now there is a south star, it's Sigma Octantis, but it's fifth magnitude. So from our light polluted skies here, you're not gonna be able to see that. So it's best to just use Alpha and Beta Centauri and the Southern Cross as your pointers. So now that we've kind of oriented ourselves to the point in the sky around which everything turns, how do we go about finding Vela? It's not the easiest constellation to find. Um, I struggled with it myself, um, trying to figure out the best way to star hop to it by naked eye. So what I've come up with is a little, is a little obscure, but you might come up with something better. Um, so look for the Southern Cross here, Crux, 
okay? And you will also see over here this bright star, Canopus, which we've gone over before. That's Alpha Carina. So that's part of Carina the keel. So you know you're in the vicinity of the great ship Argo Navis. So where's, where's the sail? It depends on which way the ship is turned. From, uh, from areas like Miami or Mexico City, the ship is kind of sideways with the stern sticking up in the sky. But from farther south, the ship is upright. So you've got Carina here. This is Canopus. And what I look for, what I would look for, is the Southern Cross here. And this whole area between the two is the keel of the ship, Carina. And then just above that, you can imagine the sail of the ship is sitting on, you know, at the top. So it's going to be somewhere up in here. So somewhere up in here doesn't really help us, does it? So again, here's the Southern Cross. And if you look over to the right, you see another four stars here that look like another cross. This is sometimes mistaken for the Southern Cross. This is known as the False Cross. And what's interesting about it is two of the stars in the False Cross are part of Vela, the sail along with this reddish star here. You almost can't miss this reddish one here. So if you can find this region of the sky, the upper right portion of the false cross and this reddish star here, you're in the vicinity of Vela the Sail. So not, not an easy star hop, I'll admit it. Let's go ahead and turn on our constellation lines. And a lot of unfamiliarity here, but that's okay. Um, here's Alpha and Beta Centauri here. You can see they're part of Centaurus. Here's Crux, the Southern Cross. And here are the four stars here that make up the False Cross, right here. And you can see these two here are part of Vela the Sail, as well as this reddish star here. That one is Lambda Vellum. Uh, Valorum, actually, Lambda Valorum, or Sun Ale, and that is a second magnitude, sort of a reddish star. So here's here's the area of, of Vela here. Here's the great ship. Here's Carina the keel, right here, and here's Puppus the stern, and you've got Columba, Noah's dove, down here with the olive branch. So let's take a look at the mythical figures. And let's let's go over this a little bit. Here's the Southern Cross right here. Here's Alpha and Beta Centauri. And if you form a line here, as I said earlier, you're going to end up in this region down here. This is about the location of the South Celestial Pole. Over here to the right of the Southern Cross, you're going to find the four stars here of the False Cross. And these two here, along with this red star here, will get you in the vicinity here of Vela, the sail. So a little navigation here in the southern hemisphere that we're not used to doing is always fun. So there are no real bright stars in Vela. So let's, let's travel to a dark site and see what this would look like. And here we get a really good view of the southern sky here from a dark location. So we'll pretend we just traveled outside of the city of Buenos Aires to a, a darker location. Here's Alpha and Beta Centauri. Here's the Southern Cross. Here's the False Cross. And, and these two stars here along with this reddish star here, this area here is Vela the Sail. So we have a double star to search for here within Vela. We'll start with that, Gamma Velorum. And 
sometimes also known as Rigor. This is a second magnitude star that actually has a little surprise in store for us. So let's go ahead and look through the finder scope. And through the finder scope here, it's actually a really nice field of view here. You can see here that um, Gamma Valorum does not split yet. But through an eyepiece, get a little surprise here. Let's go with a higher power, a nine millimeter eyepiece. You can see the gamma splits here into two and actually has a third member. So it's a multiple star system. Nice little surprise here, a triple star. Let's go ahead and split it manually. There we go. I would recommend if you're going to point your telescope at Gamma Valorum to use a nine millimeter, perhaps a six millimeter eyepiece. To um, yeah, this third member here will, will separate faster, but the two main members here, a little bit closer together, a separation is just under five arc seconds. So you'll need um, a higher power eyepiece to do that. Pretty impressive, actually. Okay, we've returned to a naked eye view here. We have several deep sky objects within Vela to, to observe. The first one is an open cluster, NGC 2547. And this is a fifth magnitude open cluster. Let's have a look through the finder here. It's like a really loose knit open cluster. So this would do best with a low power eyepiece. So we're gonna go with we're gonna go with a 19 millimeter pan optic, and you can see it's even got a little bit of of uh, color differences in the members here. You've got some gold, some blue, even a little reddish one here and here. Very nice. It is NGC 2547 or the Golden Earring Cluster, Colander 177. Okay, I have another deep sky object here for us to observe together. And that is NGC 3132. I've never seen any of these in real life. This is also known as Caldwell 74 or the Eight Burst Planetary Nebula, also known as the Southern Ring Nebula. It's magnitude 10 located 4,100 light years from Earth. And through the finder scope, you can, you can start to make it out here. As a, it looks like a stellar object. And let's put a high power eyepiece on. Planetary nebula usually respond really well to high power eyepieces. Again, a planetary nebula is a dying star. It's in the process of casting off its outer layers as it burns through its fuel. Okay, and I have one more open cluster here, and that's IC2391. This is a magnitude two and a half open cluster, also known as Caldwell 85. This one is 574 light years from Earth. This is a nice little open cluster. 
This is the kind of open cluster you need low power for. There's my lowest power eyepiece, 24 millimeter pan optic, giving me almost a whole degree of a true field of view. And you can see a, a scattering there of a dozen or two stars. This object is listed as being an entire degree in size on the sky, so it, it actually is larger than that eyepiece could show. It's more like about to here. So this would be better viewed through binoculars or a finder scope. Okay, so let's get reoriented with uh, where we are in the sky again. We're looking from an, a location below the equator. Um, Buenos Aires here in our example. And we're looking south, pretty high up in March. And Vela is part of the great ship Argo Navis, consisting of Puppis the stern, Carina the keel, and Vela the sail. So here's the Southern Cross. And here are the four stars of the False Cross which you can kind of see where it gets its name. I can see how that could be mistaken for the Southern Cross if you weren't paying attention. These two stars here, along with this reddish one here, let those be your guideposts to Vela the Sail. And here are the constellation boundaries. Um, here's Carina the Keel. Here's Puppis the Stern, which includes a lot more sky here. And then this region here is, is Vela the Sail, which includes a lot of this dark region here in the Milky Way. It's a pretty good sized constellation. So this concludes my review of Vela the Sail. I hope you've enjoyed it. Good night and good seeing.